You know, I've got a bit of a confession to make. Though I like to call myself a Godzilla fan, and I've seen a handful of the movies, they don't really tend to hold my interest. Of the nine Godzilla movies I've seen, the only one I can honestly say I paid attention to was the 2014 movie, which, for what it's worth, I enjoyed. So I'm excited for King of the Monsters, but for the most part, I tend to consider myself more of a sideline Godzilla fan. The kind of person who learned all he knows about the movies because of Cinemassacre's Godzilla-thon. The kind of person who picks his favorite monster based solely on the way they look. And the kind of person who thinks unholy things when he sees art of Monster Girl Godzilla. I just think this is a series that works better when it cuts right to the chase and gets right to the action in a way that only a video game can. So, bust out your game cubes, cause we're playing Melee. Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, aside from strangely being the second Destroy All Monsters game I've reviewed, was basically the first outing for Pipeworks Studios. They're not exactly a large developer, and there's not much in their catalog of much note, but I do still own two of their other projects, Jeopardy and Devil May Cry HD Collection. Both competent releases. There's no shortage of earlier Godzilla games, many with a less than flattering reputation, but Pipeworks was entrusted to reinvent the games into a 3D arena fighter, a simple genre that was unrepresented in American Godzilla games at the time. An alien race called the Vortac, who it turns out are an original creation for the game instead of using one of the many alien races from the movies, have come to enslave Earth. And to ensure the cooperation of the humans, the Vortac have taken control of all kaiju on the planet, and whatever monster you pick is the one that breaks free to wreck the Vortac's shit. This is thankfully accomplished by bashing through the roster, ending with a final battle with Mecha Godzilla on the alien mothership. It seems pretty obvious that the Destroy All Monsters name was chosen not only for sounding catchy and for brand recognition, but because even the plot is similar. So, two monsters are placed in one of several populated cities, most of which are strangely America-centric, and duke it out, just what one would expect. Each monster has four forms of attack at their disposal, in punches, kicks, appendages, and breath attacks, giving each character a unique feel. A uh, semi-unique, I'm not exactly expecting a miracle here. Take down your opponent, cause as much collateral damage as you want, and take home the title of Monster of Monsters. Now, it's important to preface all this with the disclaimer that the gameplay here is slow. Compare it to any other fighting game and it feels pretty lethargic. It's hard to hold it against the game considering that Godzilla monsters are always bulky and awkward, especially in the rubber suits that were still in use at the time. It's iconic, exactly what any Godzilla fan would expect, but probably not what a casual player would want. Just facing your opponent can sometimes be harder than you'd expect. Not helping the case is the lack of available moves. Don't expect any long combos or special moves, just one or two button mashing combos on each attack button. The manual makes it look a lot more impressive than it actually is. It gets pretty samey watching everyone using the same punches and kicks, and even Godzilla using his tail doesn't do much. Different looking breath attacks and different throws do look nice, as do a few of the characters being able to fly, but it's eye candy and nothing more. A few of the more iconic moves from the films would have done wonders, but as it is now, what character you pick is completely up to personal preference. That brings us to one of the more questionable aspects of the game, the roster selection. First off, there's only 11 characters, which is a pretty disappointingly low number for a series with so many iconic monsters. It's standard practice for the first entry in a fighting series to have a low number of characters when the developers are setting up the mechanics and engine, and then the sequel adds more characters on the established framework. I know this, but it still means that the first entry has a very limited shelf life. Not to mention, some of the choices are just baffling. Because it's an early GameCube fighting game called Melee, there's clones. 
A certain part of me is okay with having both Ghidorah and Mecha Ghidorah, even though they're the same entity, but having both Heisei and Millennium Godzilla is going too far. The Xbox version even has two Mecha Godzillas. Now, aside from those, I think most of the included choices are fine, but it's still a little weird. I know Godzilla 2000 was a recent movie at the time, but in hindsight, Orga is an odd inclusion. I also can't say that if I were putting together a roster of this size, Megalon would have been one of my choices. Still, guess I can't complain so long as my boy Desotroya made the cut. Of course, most of the characters are locked from the start and you're left with only a third of the roster. How are the rest unlocked? By playing through story mode. It's nothing more than picking a character and fighting through most of the roster leading up to the final battle with Mechagodzilla. By doing so with certain characters, another one is unlocked. Simple, right? Well, here's the problem. The CPU in story mode is really hard. Many of the fights put the players on the ropes, Mecha King Ghidorah always gives me a death or two, and the final battle with Mecha Godzilla is a real bastard. On easy difficulty. In the years I've owned this game, I've only had the drive to unlock one character before now, because beating story mode is just that much of a pain. And part of the reason the CPU gets such an advantage is the power-ups that appear on the field during the fight. There's the basic health power-up that's also the most infuriating, the similarly simple energy item, but then there's Rage. For the longest time, I figured Rage was just a cinematic way to show increased attack power, but it turns out being in Rage allows the monster to perform a devastating single attack. I legitimately didn't know that until recording. Oh, and the power-ups are the only place you're going to see Mothra, because that's what she's relegated to. The problem with the power-ups is that, thanks to the camera often getting close up to the action, power-ups usually appear off-screen, where only the CPU knows they appear, and they tend to get to them first. I've had victory robbed from me because the computer got two health restores when I didn't even know they appeared until it was too late. And the power-ups aren't the only unpredictable aspect of the fight that can turn the tides, often not in your favor. The military isn't just sitting by and hoping a monster that won't kill them reigns triumphant, they're playing an active role. While the missiles they fire are usually nothing more than pot shots, they're still annoying. What's more intrusive is the ice beams that freeze whoever the game feels like, allowing the other to get a free hit of their choice. No way to control it, just a handicap that whoever's unlucky enough to be affected by has to deal with. You know, I'm starting to get the feeling that this wasn't meant to be a serious competitive tournament fighting game. Thankfully, this game was made in an era where cheat codes were still prevalent. While there are codes to unlock all characters, they don't save, so the only real way is to cheat in story mode. I think four times damage ought to do it. With this, the story is finished in a fraction of the time, and anything unlocked stays unlocked. And Mechagodzilla still put up a hell of a fight even with that handicap, which I think cleanly demonstrates my point about the difficulty. Heart of a champion, that Mechagodzilla. So you've beaten every story mode and unlocked every character in stage. What else is there? Well, for the single player, not much. The game is clearly built for multiplayer, to the point that most of the menu options won't even open without a second controller plugged in. The only ones that do are the standard versus mode and the standard survival mode, nothing much to say about either. What's odd is that there's a mode separate from versus called melee, where the objective is for the players to fight it out, earning points for each hit scored. So it's a mode where the player who hits the other more often with more devastating attacks wins. Am I the crazy one here, or is that totally redundant? Did I not see the appeal because I just let the second controller sit idle? From my perspective, the only thing that's different here is that the round doesn't end when someone's life reaches zero. Destruction mode is not only much more self-explanatory, but much more fitting and much more fun. It's also a score attack battle, but instead of laying waste to your opponent, you're doing what Godzilla does best by turning a major city into a wasteland. It provides an entirely different experience to the standard battle, to the point that my sister, who had never played the game before, won a match against me. And of course, there's team battle mode. 
Can't even show that one to you. It needs at least three controllers and I only have two. The general problem with most of these modes is the lack of any bot support. If you don't have any human players, those games just aren't happening. Versus mode is the only place to go to fight the computer without turning it into a whole thing, and I can't understand why. The game supports four players as having three AI monsters too much for the system to handle, so they won't allow even one? I mean, it's not like this game is pushing the hardware to its limits as is. It doesn't look bad, the models are all well constructed, the environments are all destructible even though they're all boxed in, it's satisfactory. But it's not impressive enough to overlook the lack of options. I'd like to speak on the game's behalf about good frame rates explaining it, but I'm not Digital Foundry and I don't have the tools for that sort of thing. I forgot to even allow the capture card to capture higher than 30 FPS, so I don't even know what it's targeting. So it's a respectable but flawed game. I think we were all expecting that. It's a game much better suited to Godzilla fans than fight fans. I think we all expected that too. There's even a gallery filled with art for fans of the giant man to sink their teeth into. A gallery I has seemed to have nothing unlocked in. There's a place for games mostly for fans like this. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle is the most fan service and nothing else game that I've put far too much time into. But here's the core of the problem. Destroy All Monsters Melee has so few options and so little fan service that it wouldn't hold the attention of Godzilla fans for long. I imagine it is probably fun to get four players together and go on a Monster Royal Rumble, but if everyone picked new characters each round, they'd see every monster the game has to offer in only three fights. Now, imagine how much the shelf life of this game could increase if it just had a basketball mode. Thankfully, Pipeworks didn't rest on their laurels and did build upon the framework. Godzilla Save the Earth was released two years later and Godzilla Unleashed three years after that, more than doubling the roster by the end of it, from 11 to 26. All the games play very similarly, just with extra stuff thrown on top. Which means that Destroy All Monsters Melee has even less going for it nowadays. If you just want to have some fun with Godzilla, the later games are better choices and they're all pretty similar prices online. Destroy All Monsters Melee is a fun time if you just happen to pick it up, but it's aged out almost completely by this point. The sad part is, Godzilla games mostly died out after Unleashed. The gaming landscape had just changed too much for these games to sustain themselves. Sure, he appeared in some mobile and crossover games, but the King of the Monsters only dedicated console game in recent years was 2014's Godzilla for PS3 and PS4, which got negative reviews for its repetitive story mode, clunky controls, and total lack of local multiplayer. Personally, I think the current gaming scene would be up for a new Godzilla fighting game in the mold of Pipeworks Trilogy, especially if it was a budget release. Take that fighting formula with a good selection of characters, more recognizable moves and combos, more agile characters, more modes with a focus on being fun and kinda silly, all with modern presentation value and full 4 player local and online multiplayer. It really could work, but for now, we'll just need to play Destroy All Monsters Melee and dream of what could be. One thing left to say... DESTROYER!